everybody. I'm here with my daughter Izzy this morning, or actually I'm here with Izzy. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna make some minestrone soup. And um, here's Nelson and Ginger Snap. The only thing Ginger Snap was interested in on our prep table was the Parmesan cheese. So He's not interested in all the we veggies. Yeah, just put plastic wrap on it. <laughs> Anyway, we wanted to spend some time with you today um, and hopefully give you some inspiration for something to make. Even though um, it's normally not too hard for me to motivate to get in the kitchen, it definitely has been a bit of a struggle with all of um, the anxiety and the worry and um, work drying up uh, for me and a lot of my friends. And so, um, I realized that I should do this for myself as much as I should do it for everybody out there that is dealing with being home a lot, um, or maybe you have a loved one that's working in a hospital or in a grocery store supporting all of us, and you might be able to make some soup for them when they get home. Uh, so Izzy, how do you feel so far about what's been going on? This is a new experience for all of us, but especially for the kids. Honestly, I, I don't think I'm gonna get hurt. Like, I might get it, you know, and I probably will, but like, I'm not really gonna get too sick, you know, but I might get other people sick, so like. So that's why we're staying home. <laughs> yeah, try not to go too many places, I guess. But. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Appreciate it so much. Um, we're going to make some ministry soup. I put the recipe there for you that's on my blog, um, fresh off the press this morning. And so if you're not ready to cook with us right now, that's okay. Um, we'll just kind of talk through the recipe and you can make it a little bit later. Um, I'd be interested to know in the comments what you've been making at home or how you've been coping with this. Um, we're chopping our onions right now making sure that we curl our fingers under so we don't hurt our fingers at all. And I'm heating up my pot. This is a really big soup pot. You can do it in a little bit smaller pot, but I just thought I might want to make a little extra, so I'm going to make it in a big pot. Um, and so I'm heating up the pot first, and I need some olive oil. forgot about that. So in the recipe, I mentioned that there's an option for doing, there's some water on my hands. So the water drops on my hands, I think got into the pot. Anyway, there is an option if you wanna put bacon or pancetta in the pot first, you can do that. And that you wanna brown and it gives a lot of flavor to the soup is kind of uncomparable, hard to get that flavor with anything vegetarian. But the version I'm making today is gonna be vegetarian because I don't have any pancetta or bacon. That's pretty much the only thing I would use pancetta or bacon for is to put in a soup like this because it just adds so much flavor. You wanna go wash your hands so that you can get the onions off of them? Is he got some onion juice in her eyes, so she's going to wash up. So after the pot is nice and hot, I put in the olive oil and immediately put my onions in. I used a whole onion for mine because I'm making a big pot of soup. You can use a half of an onion if you're making a smaller pot. And I'm going to emphasize during today's video kind of how you cook without a recipe and you can use your intuition to use the amounts that you need. Um, could you put in a couple big pinches of salt? We're gonna help the onions to release moisture by putting in, um, you can put even more than that, a little bit more. Putting a few generous pinches of salt in. I'll put a little bit more olive oil because my onion was quite big. You want to stir that for me, Izzy? Okay. 
also, Izzy's actually been cooking her whole life. I have some pictures of her when she was a baby um, in the kitchen. And um, one time when she was, oh my gosh, I think she was three because I had just gotten her her own knife. Ouch. Or maybe two. And I went to take a bath as fast as I could because um, I was leaving her alone in the living room. She was probably three. Anyway, I just taught her how to use her knife by curling her fingers under, but it was only supposed to be under supervision by me until I was absolutely sure that she got the hang of it. Well, I went to take a shower, and I was probably in there for 30 seconds because I was really good at taking fast showers at that point. And when I came out, the broccoli that I had taken out to prep for dinner that night was all completely chopped perfectly. Um, and I almost screamed because I was worried I was going to see a little girl with um, a couple of fingers cut off and blood squirting everywhere. But she was just calm as could be sitting in the living room. She had prepped the broccoli for me and um, didn't cut herself. So that was a testament to a good knife skills class <laughs> that your kid won't hurt themselves as much if you give them proper instruction when they're young or when they're older. You can teach older kids or older adults how to use a knife too. But anyway, she still has the same knife. You want to hold it up? It's a Japanese vegetable knife. It's a kid's size. It's, it's it has, four inch. It, it works really well and it's like sharp too. Sharp. Yeah, so speak up so they can hear right. you. Yeah, it has like, yeah, I don't know. How old is this thing? We got that knife in like 2009, I think. Yeah, but it, it stays pretty sharp as well. Like You can just go straight through potatoes. So we put our onions in. I like to layer the ingredients. Would you like to chop a carrot, Izzy? Sure. Maybe cut those in half one more time to dice them. And just be careful of your fingers. Um, I like to layer the ingredients when I'm making a soup so that you start cooking the ingredients that take the longest to get soft and flavorful, like the onion. You want to start with that. And then you can add your things like carrots and celery and potatoes. So next in is going to be the carrots. And I've got a lot of instruction on knife skills on my online course, but I'll likely in the next, um, in the coming days, I'll likely be posting some little videos on how to chop your basic veggies too. Because everyone's having to cook more at home. We're even cooking more at home, even though we normally cook every day. We usually, a couple times a week, we'll go out for lunch, um, or we'll go out for tea, um, or we'll go out for dinner once a week. Um, so this is a switch for us too. And I think the first thing for me to go is the creativity. I can be motivated to get in the t kitchen, but it's like nothing sounds good anymore. And so last night, uh, we were fortunate to make a stop at Whole Foods and they had fresh fish, which I wasn't sure what we were gonna find there. Uh, we didn't really stock up before um, all this happened. And so we've been going day by day with our fresh food. So we found some really nice um, black cod at, at Whole Foods. Do you chop those Hi. for me, Izzy? Oh, I thought you were saying wheat but I was with my dad at Wheatsville last night. Oh yeah, we were at Whole Foods while my daughter was at Wheatsville with her dad. Um, so I found some black cod and I wasn't too excited about making it because we already had it a couple times this week, but it, you know, I didn't want to complain because it's an amazing, um, fish to be able to eat during times like this. And then my husband thought to make a little curry sauce. I'm putting the celery in now. So now we've got our onions, carrots, and celery in here. So my husband thought to make a little curry sauce that just had like a
half a teaspoon of yellow curry paste and a few tablespoons of coconut milk simmered for about 30 seconds. And we put that on top of the fish and then we had a little bit of salad from our garden and um, some leftover risotto. And I put some fresh herbs on top of the risotto. And it was a really quick and easy meal and that coconut curry sauce made such a big difference. It was like an entirely different fish tasted totally different than what I was used to having and it made me really happy. Just that little change. Um, so that's why it's nice to cook with other people and get ideas from blogs and get ideas from other people that are, that are cooking, especially if you're at home by yourself. Um, really helps just to have some inspiration or ideas um, because it's it's hard to come up with the creativity all the time. Now this recipe calls for potatoes, but I don't have any potatoes. They've been out of the stores for like a week it seems. I haven't been able to find any potatoes, but I've had this um, butternut squash for a week or so. They last for a long time. Um, and I usually don't peel them if I'm going to make a blended soup, but I'm going to do a quick peel. I don't need that much of this one. I'm going to peel it and then chop up a little bit to put in our minestrone. I love, um, you know, coming up. Thank you, Izzy. I'm going to put our scraps in there for stock later. I love to substitute things in recipes and encourage people to do that. We're going to cut our butternut squash into cubes, kind of small, maybe quarter inch to half inch cubes, and just put those right in. I'm taking a little shortcut on this soup that I want to tell you about so that when you're making it at home, you might want to try it. I already boiled some water on the stove. And so when it's time to add some water, you don't have to take 10 or 15 minutes to let it come up to a boil. And it's not normally an issue, but if I'm doing something like this where I want to speed up the recipe so people don't get um, bored, I like to do that. So at this point, I've got my onions, carrots, celery, um, squash. I don't have any zucchini. I haven't been able to find that in the stores, but that's fine. I'm going to use a little bit of kale instead of my zucchini in the recipe. Yeah, it got nice and quiet because we stopped sauteing, we put in the water, so hopefully the rest of this video will be more peaceful. I won't have to yell over the simmering. <laughs> okay, and we could even put a lid on to speed up the process of this coming back up to a boil. I wonder if this lid on is he? So what else do we have? I chopped and diced some tomatoes and I also seeded them. It's not an absolutely necessary step, but can you think of why we might want to take the seeds out of our tomatoes? Um, would it make it like uh, soupier, I guess? Hmm. You know? Yes, it adds more liquid. Um, sometimes when you put seeds of a tomato in a soup, the um, seeds float to the top. And it doesn't, so aesthetically, it doesn't look as good. Um, I have read that the seeds of the tomato are very hard to digest, and that's one reason why I like to keep them out. Um, so I just put the seeds, I cut the tomato in half, I take all the seeds out, and then I strain the um, juice out and put the juice back in with the tomato. So that only took me maybe like 30 seconds to do right before the video went on. And um, I literally started prepping for this video 30 minutes ahead because it took me a long time to do all the um, blog posts this morning. 
So you can actually make this soup um, pretty quickly. Um, you can grab whatever ingredients you have in your fridge. Um, like in the produce drawer, if you have one stalk of celery, one carrot, a half of an onion, um, maybe some kale or some zucchini, some peas in the freezer, any combination of those and you can make a version of the soup. So don't feel like if you don't have everything on the ingredient list, you can't make the soup today. Um, I actually got the inspiration for this soup to do the soup today because before we went to the store yesterday, uh, the fridge was looking a little bit bare, but I remembered that every time um, I make this soup, it only takes like one of each ingredient and I can make a big pot. So that's what made me think of that today. Um, we've got some fresh herbs that we're gonna put in a little later. We've got parsley, sage, and basil. I like to put the basil in at the very end because it adds a lot of nice freshness to the pot, whereas the parsley and the um, sage can go in a little bit earlier and kind of blend with the flavors of the soup. So I'm gonna ask Izzy to slice the sage for me. Thank you, Izzy. And I don't know if Izzy was that excited about helping me this morning, but I kind of begged her because I thought she would make the video so much more interesting. And I thought that the soup would taste better because whenever more people are involved in making the soup, it just always tastes better. Um, so luckily uh, she was willing to help. It also said cooking with Izzy or something. Oh yeah, my, my advertisement said that it was gonna be cooking together with Rachel and Izzy. So I kind of committed her. <laughs> but that's okay. She's, she forgives me. So I've got some kale here. We started a garden this year in a community garden. Um, I wanted to grow more things on my porch. Um, I have fresh herbs out there, but I wanted to grow some more things. So I started doing lettuce and kale and stuff last year. Well, I just basically was feeding the local squirrel population, so uh, I was struggling with that. So then we got a community garden plot that we had to get on the waiting list for and it finally came up. And so now we're getting things like kale and chard, uh, snow peas, onions, and um, lettuce galore and cilantro. So anyway, it's been really fun and really good for me to spend more time outside. It just forces me to get outside and um, spend time in the garden. It reminds me of um, when I was a kid and my mom wanted us to help her in the garden and I really disliked it, but I'm really grateful that she had us do that because now I know how to do a lot of things and I actually enjoy it. So our tastes change over time and uh, some of the things that we make our kids do are very beneficial for them when they're in later in life. I forgot to put garlic in. I usually put that in with the onions and celery and um, onions, celery and what else? Carrots. Mm -hmm. But we can put it in now, that's okay. So I'm gonna ask Izzy to help me chop some garlic, or you do not want to because it's gonna make you cry. I don't wanna chop onions. I'm probably probably fine garlic. with garlic, okay. Um, so I just thought I would tell you a little bit about um, beans for this recipe. So sometimes I use fresh green beans instead of something like a cranberry, barlow tea, pinto bean, or white bean. Sometimes I use a fresh green bean and I put those in uh, maybe about um, the last 10 minutes of cooking. They can also be a substitute for the green peas in the recipe. You can just use green beans and that's like a fresh summertime version of the recipe. I wasn't able to get green beans at the store, 
and they're not coming in my garden yet. So I decided to use some Barletti beans. The only thing is the way I made them, I pressure cooked them to make for refried beans the other day and they're kind of mushy, but that's okay. I'm gonna try them in the soup. Um, if you don't have beans, you could add some cooked chicken to the soup, um, or you can just add some extra green peas. You wanna put the garlic in, sweetie? So usually I saute the garlic, but it's gonna go in wait, wait, wait. right now. This is starting to simmer. So I think even though the veggies aren't fully cooked yet that are in here, we'll put the rice in fairly soon and we'll put the beans in and then we'll put in our cabbage. Let's put in the cabbage now. That takes a little while to cook. Oh, <laughs> that was a blooper. That was good. We like bloopers whenever we do videos that are like recorded and edited. Um, we always have extra B-roll that's like bloopers and we'll try to put that in at some point because it's a lot more entertaining than the polished stuff. So I'd be interested to know in the comments like what you've been doing for your food prep, if you've been able to um, come up with any strategies, um, if you're getting your family to help, um, let us know what's been happening there. I'm gonna go get some more water. Did you get too much sleep last night? <laughs> Sometimes it happens to me, I feel more tired if I get more sleep. I want to tell everybody, Izzy, what you've been practicing for at um, musical theater. Oh, Hamilton. Yep. Izzy's in a theater production of Hamilton. And it's been so exciting learning about the music and learning about the history. It inspired me to get the, um, I think it's like 36 CD set of um, the Ron Chernow biography of uh, Alexander Hamilton. It's so fascinating. And it made me realize that the story that they tell about in the musical is accurate because he got it directly from that biography, which is not fictional. It's based on, you know, all the historical texts and diaries and letters. And um, there's a lot of stuff documented from that time, revolutionary time period. So anyway, um, Izzy, what is your role? She's gonna play a I'm couple gonna, different things, but in the well, Saturday no, night have, one. Well, um, so in the show that um, my character is gonna be, at, so I'm gonna be Angelica, but in all the other shows, I'm gonna be uh, just like the ensemble, I guess. So. Like a town's person yeah. singing in the chorus. But on one of the nights, she's gonna have the role of Angelica who's the sister-in-law of um, Alexander Hamilton. She has some nice solos and a whole song mm -hmm. that she sings slash raps. It's a, <laughs> amazing. It's called Satisfied. Called Satisfied. Yeah, you can look it up on Spotify or like on Google. <laughs> Yeah, we encourage you to look up the music to Hamilton if you haven't already. And um, I found out from, uh, my mom sent me an article from the New York Times art section a couple weeks ago. Okay, I put in the cabbage, I put in the rice, now I'm putting in the beans. So what did you get? And you notice I don't have a measuring cup, so you can do this freehand or you can measure things the way I recommended in the recipe, that's okay too. But what did your mom say? So my mother sent an article from the art section in the New York Times a couple weeks ago saying that there will be a Hamilton movie next year. And what's so amazing about it is it's filmed, it was filmed in I think 2015 and 2016 
on Broadway. So it's the original Broadway cast um, of Hamilton. And so they're not like recreating it in a set. They are actually showing footage from the musical. And then later on, they did close-up shots of the actors and incorporated that into the film. So it's gonna be, I think, just like you were at the original um, Broadway show. So it kind of gives me the goosebumps thinking about that. I can't wait. It's gonna be maybe next summer coming out. Um, and besides that, Izzy, what else is going on with you? TikTok. <laughs> she loves TikTok. What's your um, handle on TikTok if somebody oh, wants to go uh, on and follow I think, you? I think it's Izzy, I-Z-Z-Y, and then... Underscore? No, then oh. it's space Revis. Or, well, and Revis is R-I-V-A-S, but... It might be Izzy L. Revis. So maybe we'll post it in the comments yeah. later. <laughs> I thought it was something like Izzy Crystal. Oh, I, I, I changed it. Oh, you changed it, okay. Yeah. yeah. Crystal was like a nickname for me when I was in Terra because, which was one of my classrooms. So I, it was like a dog name, I guess. Like my friend Lulu was a diva. <laughs> so, yeah. So if we were making a fish stew right now, our cats would be up on this table begging for scraps, but because we're making vegetable soups, they went upstairs to nap. They're not bothering us at all. Maybe once we put the parmesan on. Yeah, if we open up the Parmesan cheese, ginger snap might come down. So I'm just slicing up the herbs right now. I'm going to put some of the parsley in now, and we'll save a little bit of the parsley for later. So let's recap here. We sauteed our onions, carrots, celery. Squash. Put our butternut squash in. Cabbage. Kale. Kale's over there. Oh, I thought you put in the kale. Um, we put our rice, our beans, and sage, and half of the parsley. Mm -hmm. What else? I don't know. Is that it? And we put some salt. sea salt, but we're going to have to put some more. Should we put in some pepper? Yeah, we could put some black pepper in. We'll grind that in there. Put in some black pepper if you like that for seasoning. Parsley. The lid just burned me. So at some point, I'm probably going to take the, maybe I'll do it now. I'm going to take the phone. Aha, okay. Never mind, we're all oh. good. Can you, can you bring it over so they can look at the soup? I was getting the kids to calm down upstairs. Oh, nice. So we're going to show you what the soup looks like right now. Hi, Marco. We just saw that you're on here. <laughs> and Deirdre. See? It's good to see everybody. I can't really see the names when it's far away. Yeah. But I will notice um, afterwards, I'm going to go through and see who all was on the call. So the soup looks really good already. Um, it's just going to take a little bit more time to come together, but I'm going to start seasoning it with a little more salt. I think it's about time to put our peas in. These are frozen, so they're a little bit hard to get out of this. Oh, wait, there's some left. <laughs> you get them? There we go. Huh. Um, so sometimes you'll see the soup made with pasta instead of rice. So if you're at home and you're like, oh, I don't have any rice. Um, I don't know how to make rice. Well, the rice was put in here raw. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, that's, so I'm going to leave that out. 
Um, you can definitely um, put some pasta in, either some uncooked pasta, just like we did with the rice, or if you have some cooked pasta, you could put a little bit in your bowl and then pour the hot soup over the cooked pasta that is left over. Um, and that way the pasta won't get really huge and expand in your, in your pot. What you'll notice with the soup over time when you refrigerate it is that the rice is going to expand and it's going to get thicker as it cools. So when you reheat the soup, if you want, you can add a little bit of extra water or broth, um, or you can just have it be a little bit thicker when you're eating it to be more like a stew. Um, and then when I reheat my soup, I like to just reheat the portion that I'm going to use for that meal. That way the rest of it will stay fresh in the refrigerator. And then uh, I like to garnish each bowl with some fresh herbs, like some fresh parsley or some fresh basil. Uh, you could also put in some fresh greens. Um, like that might be what we do at the very end. We might put some of this kale in, but I'm going to wait because it'll... Um, the fresh greens are better just to put in single servings so that they don't get brown in your, or, you know, dark. You want them to stay bright. So this is almost ready to try, I think. Um, could you grate some Parmesan cheese, Izzy? Yeah. Do you want to put your special glove on? Yeah. I don't think I've ever actually cut myself grating stuff. But it's kind of fun to use this. Want to tell them about this glove? So, I don't actually know like what this is really, but it makes it so that you don't cut yourself when you're grading. It's things. a special kind of glove that helps prevent cutting your finger, so it's, it's great thick. for grading. It's very thick, too. But you want to put it on the hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. wrong hand. And so Izzy's going to do some cheese grating for us. Ow, what is that? Parmesan cheese is optional if you want to put some on for garnish. Um, if you don't have Parmesan cheese, it's no problem. Just make sure that your soup is salted enough. I'm actually going to take some of the soup out here in a minute because it looks like the rice is cooked. And I'm going to taste it for seasoning. Do you want to tell them what you're using there for a grater? So I am using the microplane sharpener cutting tools <laughs> grater. It's Not a microplane zester. Not sponsored. And then we're just using some Whole Foods Parmesan cheese. Um, yeah, they have good Parmesan. Try it's it. It's raw cheese. It, it's raw. It's very good. So I just tasted my soup. Our soup. It's not my soup. <laughs> it's fine. And I'm going to put a couple of big pinches, maybe a teaspoon more. Is this enough? That looks good. Hi, Julie. Hi, Amy. <laughs> I'm so excited to see who all was on the call afterwards. Okay, so one thing you need to know about soup, seasoning soup, is if you don't put enough salt in, it will kind of taste like um, dirty dishwater, which isn't a good taste for soup. So make sure that you season the soup with an adequate amount of salt that you, the flavors of all the vegetables come out. But you don't wanna make it so salty that you have to gulp down a bunch of fresh water afterwards because it was too salty. This cheese is salty. And the cheese is salty, right? It's salty. I need some water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, right now I'm going to add a little more parsley. 
I'm gonna add some of the basil and I'll save a little basil to go on the top of each portion as a garnish. You can kind of tell when the soup is done because you'll see that the rice is nice long grains in your soup. And Izzy, uh, shall we put a little bit of that in for, let's put maybe half of our kale. So I didn't have zucchini, so I'm gonna use some fresh kale that's chopped up just to make it nice and green. And then, uh, let's see, I'm gonna get a couple of bowls. And we are almost ready for lunch. Nelson, do you want to come down and have a bowl of soup? This is good cheese. <laughs> now we do a lot of our shopping at Central Market and Wheatsville, but Whole Foods, for some reason, we... Has the best Parmesan cheese. We love their Parmesan cheese, and we don't even eat a lot of cheese, but Parmesan is usually oh, on, on, on hand if here. If you want some good mozzarella cheese, Central Market is the place to go. Yep. But. So we'll give you a close-up shot of the soup, and I'd love to have pictures of your soup in the next few days if you decide to make it. Um, I know your soups are going to be beautiful and nourishing. As soon as I started thinking about making the soup, maybe you could do a close-up, Nelson. As soon as I started thinking about making the soup, it's like my mouth started watering and I was like, oh my God, I want that soup now. I don't want to wait till tomorrow when I'm doing the video. So the ones I'm doing now are a little thicker because I'm getting to the bottom where wait, all the wait, rice wait. is. On, somebody said something about wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to. Hi, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're really excited to um, kind of chat with you afterwards about this. I know there'll be people jumping on this after we post the recorded video. Um, Izzy's now putting Parmesan on hers because she can't wait to eat it. <laughs> so thank you so much everybody for tuning in. It cheered me up so much to be able to do this with Izzy and have all of you um, by our side, cheering us on. And um, it makes me happy to think that someone might be making a pot of soup tonight at their house. So I'll also Yay. comment if you made soup. Oh yeah, comment uh, yeah. You, when you make the soup. And post um, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. Be well, um, stay home if you can. And we'll be back soon with another video. What do you want to do next? You mean for food? Yeah. Oh. Homemade pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe we'll do some pizza next. Bye. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>